Hi friends, now we will start discussion on the topic energy production from biomass and waste part 2 and that is chemical root based processes. So, in the part 1 we have discussed how the biomass and waste can be converted to energy component uh, through biological roots basically is anaerobic digestion and some specific type of waste we have seen that are more suitable for that route. Similarly, for the chemical route we will also see that some specific type of waste and biomass components will be more suitable for the energy production. Some example say some used oil or waste grease or say some oil seeds can also be used for this process. So, what we will see some of the biomass can be directly used for chemical conversion in which glycerol or say, or say lipid content is higher or some feedstock can be used to produce the oil or the lipid first then to it, it can be converted to biodiesel. So, basically the chemical route converts the feedstock particularly the bio oil or the, or the lipids to biodiesel through trans esterification. And now, we will discuss on this contents that is the chemical route the trans esterification what is this and then organic waste for trans esterification that means, what type of waste can be used for trans esterification process and oil seeds to oil production the need of bio oil upgradation why biodiesel production why we cannot use bio oil directly that part we will discuss and then biodiesel production from bio oil through trans esterification. So, what are the roots and the flow seeds and different prospects and concerns we will discuss and flow seed for biodiesel production from various feedstock and then comparison of biodiesel and different bio oil to justify the need of the biodiesel production. So, now we will see what the trans esterification process is. We see the term indicates trans esterification. So, there will be some esters and the alkyl groups of the esters will be changed in this reaction. And one example is your the glycerol if we have that is the major component of, of oil in the plant oil or maybe say edible and non edible oil if we have. So, this is our oil if we have this oil we have here C H 2 O H C H 2 H that is glycerol backbone and this O H is replaced by some organic acids. So, three different organic acids. So, that is giving us triglyceride. So, this triglyceride is available in the oil and then that has to be converted to this fatty acid methyl ester that is called biodiesel and we will get the glycerol here. So, we are getting the glycerol. So, triglyceride will be converted to fatty acid methyl esters and glycerol. So, this process is called trans esterification. So, these R 1 C O R R 1 C O O C H 2 this this group we are getting this separated R 1 C O O and C H 3. So, we are getting here R 1 C O O C H 3 similarly R 2 C O O C H 3 similarly R 3 C O O C H 3. So, these are the different compounds which we are getting those are the composition of biodiesel that is called fatty acid methyl ester and this process is called trans esterification process. So, this process uh, will not take place at any condition. So, some specific requirement is there for this reaction. So, that is we need some catalyst and we need to add methyl alcohol. So, methyl alcohol will give us the methyl group and that will be added with uh, R 1 C O O C H 3 like this type of esters. So, one esters we had here we are getting another esters. So, that is trans esterification and in this case during the process of trans esterification 
an alcohol such as methanol reacts with the triglyceride oils contained in plant oils, animal fats or recycled grease to form fatty acid, alkyl esters that is biodiesel and glycerin. The reaction requires heat and a strong base catalyst such as sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide and the simplified chemical reaction is as follows I have explained. Now, what type of feedstocks will be more suitable for this type of conversion processes that part we will see. So, we have some organic waste which can go through this trans esterification process may be of waste oil seed, it may have waste oil or cooking oil or we may have recycled grease. So, these three major components of the waste which can be processed through this route and if it is a waste oil seed then we have to get the oil first from the oil seeds then we will get bio oil, bio oil extraction then then bio oil or this waste oil or cooking oil and recycled grease all those intermediate products or all the all the uh, inputs will be converted to biodiesel through the trans esterification and this process is called upgradation of the oil upgradation of the oil so these are the different feedstocks which can be used or can be upgraded to biodiesel now we'll see how this bio oil can be produced from the waste oil seeds so waste oil seeds uh, can be converted to bio bio oil through different routes one is your conventional methods that is expeller expeller that is the based on the pressing on the oil seed and extract the the well from it and then solvent extractions. So, we can use some solvent also the solvent will take the oil part and then the residual part will be as a solid and then also we will get the bio oil or some advanced method are there that is ultrasonic assisted extractions and then supercritical fluid extractions. So, in this solvent extractions we can use some solvent and then uh, there will be some extraction process with uh, maintaining certain condition and in this case if we use ultrasonic ultrasonicator then uh, that will help the release of oil from the oil seeds. So, if we have oil seed say inside the oil is there, so these oil molecules has to come out. So, that can come out uh, if the surface is dissolved with the solvent or through the pores is made, so then, then these molecules will come out. And now if we use ultrasonication then helps the disruptions of this wall and it will come uh, easily. So, the extractions becomes easier so, that is it, is it is called advanced method and supercritical extraction is also possible by using some carbon dioxide in supercritical phase so the, 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 that can be used to extract the liquid from the outer part of the oil sheet to the to the solvent that is the supercritical solvent. So, these are different methods which have been reported to use for the extraction of the oil from the oil seeds. Now, these are the oil press how it looks like say very lab scale and uh, this is lab scale solvent extraction unit where the oil is extracted from the oil seeds. And what are the factors that influence the extraction of the oil from the oil seeds are mentioned here that is type of solvent what type of solvent we are using that solvent has to be good interaction with the uh, or the mixing capacity with the lipid part or that is the oil part of the oil seed. And then we have to uh, biomass to solvent ratio obviously, we have to use more solvent more solvent more will be the gradient for the transfer of mass. So, more extraction we will get and then temperature also influence I, the temperature should not be very high if it is very high then the solvent can be vaporized or if it is very less then also the, the extraction may not be that efficient and then extraction method what type of extraction method we are using whether it is for mechanical method like say expeller or we are chemical or, or we are going for say extraction method using some solvent. So, all those things will influence the efficiency and the extraction time how much time we are allowing that is also influence what amount of oil is coming more we get the time it is expected that the more oil will come out and then moisture content and there may be some uh, optimum value for the extraction time also and the moisture content that also influence the oil extraction method and the particle size and shape obviously, that will also provide the surface area for the for the oil molecules to come out from it. 
So, smaller the particles obviously more will be the extraction. So, these are the factors which influences the overall extraction processes. So, now we will compare the different extraction process which has been used for the production of bio oil from the oil seeds. So, here oil press, then solvent extraction, then supercritical fluid extraction and then ultrasonic assisted extraction. So, all these have some advantage and, and disadvantage as given here, then it is very simple to use and no solvent is required that is a great advantage. But what is the disadvantage? Large biomass requirement slow that means it is complete recovery may not be possible some amount of oil can still be available and it is a slow process and then uh, solvent extraction process solvent is required which may be expensive let us say hexanes as you have mentioned here the hexanes in, in heptane etcetera. So, those are expensive solvent can be required and solvent is uh, recoverable, recoverable and reproducible this although we are using the expensive solvent we can recover it, but disadvantage is that large volume of solvent is required and expen expensive solvent recovery. If we want to recover the solvent that then that recovery is also uh, requires some amount of money. So, that is also flammable and toxic uh, we have to be careful for handling of this solvent and is super critical then the solvent is non toxic and non flammable that is and operation is simple. So, that is why we are getting advantage replacing the solvent like say hexane and heptane by the supercritical carbon dioxide. But extraction this also has some limitation that is extraction of polar compounds from biomass is difficult and then limited interaction between supercritical carbon dioxide and biomass. So, these are the disadvantage of this process. The next is uh, ultrasonic assisted. So, then less extraction time as it helps to rupture the wall of the seeds and to release and helps to release the oil molecules from the inner side to the outer of the outer side and to the solvent. Uh, so, less solvent requirement for that reason and good penetration of solvent into cell and more release of cell contents. So, these are the advantage when we use the ultrasonic assisted extraction method when uh, this has some difficulty that is scale up is not very easy and power requirement is also very high. So, these are the advantage and disadvantage of different types of oil extraction methods from the oil seed. And uh, after this extraction of oil the what, uh, what oil we are getting that contains different types of lipids and uh, as, as mentioned here the different types of say lauric acid, myristic acid, palmitic acid, stearic acid, oleic acid, linolenic acid, linoleic acid and uh, arachidonic acid. So, these are the acids which are normally available in the bio oil which is produced from the oil seeds and these are the elementary formula. And from this formula you see if we see uh, most structure of this compound. So, that is C 12 H 24 O 2. So, C H 3 C H 2 10 C O H. So, there is no unsaturation for the second my myristic also there is no unsaturation here also no unsaturation here also no unsaturation. So, if we go for these fatty acids then we are getting unsaturation here here. So, maybe one unsaturation in this case somewhere it may be two unsaturation also. So, that way saturated and unsaturated both type of acids are available in the in the bio oil. So, these uh, type of fatty acids will also influence the quality of biodiesel. So, then what is the need of this bio oil? Bio oil we are getting just simply extracting uh, the oil part or lipid part from the oil seed, but what is the need of its upgradation? Because of its inferior quality. If we see the viscosity of this bio oil is higher and we, we need to reduce it for its applications in the engine. And the plant oil is much more viscous than it is the conventional diesel fuel that is 11 to 17 times thicker than the conventional diesel oil. So, we have to break the viscosity, we have to reduce the viscosity of this. And then plant oil has also very different chemical properties and conversion characteristics to those of the conventional diesel fuel. So, you have to change those properties by the conversion. And then if the fuel is too thick it will not atomize properly. So, it will be difficult to spray in the engine to use in the engine um, or the injectors may 
get coked up and leading to poor performance, higher exhaust emissions and reduced engine life. And then the waste oil or cooking oil or recycled grease, those waste materials lose their fuel properties basically and we require the recycling and reuse and then conversion is required. And the trans esterification process basically improves all those qualities and gives a improved quality to the upgraded product that is called biodiesel. So, that is the need of the upgradations of the bio oil and that is done through the trans esterification process. Now, depending upon the feedstocks also, the process may be to some extent different. So, that part we are going to discuss and here the generalized flow sheet for biodiesel production from various feedstocks. So, generalized process if we see we have uh, some plant oil uh, or say that is vegetable oil. So, we have say or we have say recycled grease. So, what is the basic difference between these two? So, if we think about the vegetable oils then free fatty acids in this case is less, but if we think about the recycled grease we are having higher free fatty acid. So, when free fatty acid is available in the feedstock then if we go for trans esterification process then free fatty acid they will help to the production of soap. So, we have to remove the free fatty acid first, we have to remove the free, free fatty acid first. So, how we will do? We will have to use some alcohol that is that and then that that will be that is H2SO4 will be consumed by that process and uh, then we will go for the trans esterification reaction. So, if we take the vegetable oils first, then vegetable oil that is our that is containing triglycerides, we need one catalyst and we need some alcohol. So, alcohol and catalyst say methanol plus KOH or NOH that is mixed with this vegetable oils. So, then maybe vegetable oil or maybe say recycled oil, if recycled oil then we have to separate this acid free fat acid we have to get it free from the free fat acids in the pre state and then that is called dilute acid esterification step then the product from this dilute acid esterification step will come to the trans esterification reaction. And then this is after that it is very common to both type of feedstock, but up to this these two processes are different when free fatty acids is less we do not need any dilute acid esterification, but when the free fatty acid is high then we need this process. Then when uh, starting from this trans esterification reaction then we will be getting the product of it then those product will be having obviously glycerol unconverted um, alcohol and water also separation has to be done. So, we will get biodiesel part and another will get glycerin part. So, biodiesel and glycerin part will separate and biodiesel will also contain alcohol. So, we will be uh, we will be biodiesel defining. So, what alcohol we are getting it is going back to this and then refined biodiesel we will get. Similarly, what uh, glycerin we are getting here that crude, crude glycerin. So, crude glycerin will also contain some soap, some uh, alcohol, water etcetera. So, that refining of the crude glycerin is also required. So, after refining we will get refined glycerin and alcohol part which is being recovered that will go to this uh, alcohol recovery sections and will be recycled back and be used in the trans esterification reaction. So, this is the overall flow sheet for the trans esterification of vegetable oils or recycled grease. Now, from this flow sheet so it is very clear to us that it has basic 5 steps one is acid esterification then trans esterification, methanol recovery, biodiesel refining and glycerin refining. And this acid esterification is also called as pretreatment and this is required basically when the free acid content in the feedstock is higher. Then what is the acid esterification and how we will do it? So, free fatty acids in biodiesel feedstock react with alkali catalyst like NaOH and KOH and form soaps. So, which reduce the oil properties of the biodiesel. So, that is the major disadvantage if free fatty acid is available then free fatty acid will react with NaOH and it will form 
soap which is not desirable in the biodiesel product. So, triglyceride plus free fatty acids plus alcohol if we take base catalyst we will get sodium plus potassium salt of free fatty acids plus triglycerides. So, this will be the initial step because the free fatty acids reacts earlier uh, quickly than the triglyceride. So, free fatty acids reacts quickly than the triglycerides that is the soap formations will take place very easily. And then low levels of free fatty acids if available then this can be managed say around say 4 percent can be managed. How it can be managed? Initially we will add some additional NUH. So, additional NUH if it is added then uh, uh, these reactions will take first and the soap formation will not be that very high at the free fatty acids is less. So, that can be manageable to some extent. And uh, what will be the alkali content in case of free fatty acids there are some formula. So, this catalyst concentration we have to add in excess amount and that excess amount is presented here. If we use NaOH then that will be percentage of free fatty acids into 0 0.144 plus 1 percent. If it is KOH then it will be percentage of free fatty acids into 0 0.197 divided by 0 0.86 plus 1 percent and if it is sodium methoxide then percent of free, at free fatty acid into 0 0.190 plus 0 0.25 percent. So, these are the some formula which are available and that can be used for the removal of uh, those free fatty acids by this catalyst itself. And, but when it will be higher than 4 percent then we have to remove the free fatty acids first as the pre-treatment step and basically in case of animal fats and recycled grease we get uh, more than 4 percent free fatty acids and it requires pre-treatment. And uh, so, the sulfuric acid is dissolved in methanol and then mixed with the pre-treated oil. The mixture is heated and stirred and the free fatty acids are converted to biodiesel. That means, fatty acid is converted to biodiesel first through the acid catalysis reactions. So, fatty acid is not uh, available as free fatty acids it is now into glyceride form. So, once the reaction is complete it is dewatered and fed to the trans esterification process then it is going for the trans esterification process as shown in the this step. So, what are the alternative method to remove the free fatty acids or to manage the free fatty acids one we have discussed that we can use some more amount of alkali if it is less than 4 percent free fatty acid is less than 4 percent. Otherwise, we can use some enzymatic method ok. Enzymatic method can convert the free fatty acids into glyceride and then, but this is very costly and not popular choice. So, glycerolysis in this process glycerol is added some amount of glycerol is added and then free fatty acid and glycerol reacts in presence of ZN Cl2 catalyst and it is converted FFA is converted to monoglyceride and diglycerides plus water. So, this is one uh, method which can be followed to convert the free fatty acids to monoglyceride or diglyceride. And then water is vented off and it requires high temperature and it is also slow process. And then as acid catalysis followed by base catalysis. So, if we can use some acid catalyst then if we use base catalytic reactions for trans esterification then also it can be a very good solution. And if we use sulfuric acid then it catalyzes both esterification and trans esterification reactions and esterification of free fatty acid that is within 1 hour this reaction takes place, but for trans esterification it takes 2 days at 60 degree centigrade. So, this property we can explore at. So, within 1 hour the FFA is converted to esters whereas, the triglyceride is converted to esters uh, with 2 days of reactions. So, if we have free fatty acids at the initial stage we can add acid sulfuric acid. So, the free fatty acids will be converted to esters. So, for when we will be going for trans esterification process and use alkali catalyst then the production of soap will be reduced the chance of the soap production will be reduced. So, that is the concept. Then how you know that free fatty acid is available or not. So, or what will be the conversion of free fatty acids, how we will 
uh, determine. So, conversion of free fatty acids is your obviously the initial uh, minus uh, final, so initial minus final acid value divided by initial acid value. So, that we can measure, if we can measure the acid value, then we can uh, get the conversion of free fatty acids. So, acid value we have to measure. So, how we can measure acid value? That can be measured by this expression. So, what we have to do? Known amount of sample is added to some amount of neutralized ethanol and is fully dissolved by heating. Then the phenolphthalein is used as indicator and the sample is titrated with standard alkali solution. Then how much alkali solution it is taking and what is the strength of the alkali solution that will be used to calculate the acid value as per this expression. So, is equal to 56.1 into V into C by M when V is the volume of QH employed for the titration in ML and then C is the concent concentration of any solution which we have used and then in mole per liter unit and then S which we are getting here that is the mg QH per gram of waste cooking oil, waste cooking oil. So, that way we can determine the free fatty acids. Then we are coming to trans esterification. So, after free fatty acids removal or its conversion to esters, we, uh, we are going for the trans esterification reaction and trans esterification reactions we have explained what reaction is and we see we need some catalyst and base catalyst is used. So, if homogeneous catalyst is used like NOH, KOH, then it will uh, convert the, the triglyceride to methyl esters and then the glycerol. And at the same time if we have some additional catalyst and even in the stoichiometric ratio also some amount of soap formation will also take place. So, soap what is soap? Sodium and potassium salt of fatty acids. So, fatty acids which will be uh, generated during the process can also react with the sodium hydroxide and can be converted to uh, sodium salt or potassium salt that is called soap. So, efforts are on to, to replace this homogeneous catalyst by a heterogeneous one. For example, say if we have uh, sodium hydroxide, so then sodium hydroxide what it will do? In the media it will give sodium plus and OH minus ion. So, this sodium plus is available to be attached with the acid group and then converted to soap. But if we use calcium oxide as a, uh, as a heterogeneous catalyst, so then it will provide a site for the reaction, but it will not give any calcium 2 plus ion. It will provide site for the reactions for the conversion of uh, the glyceride to methyl esters, but it will not give Ca 2 plus this is not available. So, the salt of fatty acid productions is not possible. So, heterogeneous catalyst will be having some advantage that it will not produce soap in the product which is not desirable, soap is not desirable, it will decrease the quality of the biodiesel. Now, there are many factors which influence the, the biodiesel production, so the performance of the trans esterification process like say reaction temperature, the reaction time, alcohol to oil mole ratio, how much alcohol we are using that influence it and catalyst concentration, type of catalyst, free fatty acids content, mixing. Uh, your types of alcohol, water content and catalyst types. So, these are the factors which influence the, the performance of the trans esterification process. And here we will see some example of heterogeneous catalyst. Here you see sunflower, this is your feedstock, then uh, solvent methanol used, then we got uh, some catalyst that is cedium oxide, then these are the operating conditions and these are the percentage yield. And for soybean oil, methanol, K2CO3, TiO2 that was the catalyst and then under these operating conditions we got this percent of 25.15 percent of yield, biodiesel yield. And babasu coconut oil, again this is the solvent methanol for all the cases we are having methanol solvent and this is another uh, heterogeneous catalyst, again it is having 80 percent of yield. And waste cooking oil, here also we are getting 92 percent of yield. So, here we see the temperature is different, alcohol to oil ratio is different and catalyst loading is different, reaction time is different. So, all those parameters influence the performance of the 
process or the yield of the biodiesel production. But in this case when we use the heterogeneous catalyst the quality of the biodiesel improves it does not have any uh, soap in it. And then methanol recovery, so after the trans esterifications we are having say one biodiesel stream and another is your glycerol stream. So, from both the stream we will be getting uh, methanol just application of heat we will get the methanol early it will be vaporized first and will be condensed by condensation we will get the methanol recovered. And then biodiesel refining, so once this uh, separated from the glycerin the biodiesel goes through a series of cleaning up or purification step to remove excess alcohol residual catalyst and soaps and uh, these consist of multi stage washing with clean water and the product biodiesel is then dried and sent for the storage and it can further purified through an additional distillation step to, to produce a more purified product. And glycerin refining, then glycerin will also have some soap, some catalyst, some water and some alcohol. So, there will be a series of separation steps or the cleaning steps. So, the water and alcohol are also removed to produce 50 to 80 percent crude glycerin. The remaining constraints include untreated fat and oils and the large biodiesel plants glycerin can be further purified through a series of unit operations to produce product up to 99 percent purity and the purified product is suitable for use in pharmaceuticals and cosmetic use and many other applications also. And now we will see the comparison of this biodiesel which is produced from the bio oil through this trans esterification route with some bio oil. So, here the properties kinematic viscosity, CTN number, he, your heating value, cloud point, pore point, flash point, density all are fuel properties and we, we see here this is the standard diesel this is the biodiesel from Babasu oil and this is Babasu oil and uh, this is your Sawbin oil and biodiesel from Sawbin oil. So, if we, if we, we have 32.6 uh, millimeter square per second kinematic viscosity it is reduced to 4.5 for this case and here 30.3 to 3.6 at the diesel is having 3.06. So, by this conversion we are able to make the oil uh, to biodiesel with almost similar viscosity or slightly higher viscosity where the other case in the original bio oil the viscosity was very very high. Similarly, the CTN number is also increased for this biodiesel productions where 37 to 40 and 38 to 63 and this these values are very comparable to 50 and then heating value also this is high, but heating value is all these all these oils is not high because you know we have high, high content of oxygen in this biodiesel with respect to petrodiesel. So, the heating value is less but other properties are also very comparable. So, uh, here also density is also you see the density is biodiesel this much. So, sorbinol is having high density after this conversion, the density is reduced here also density is reduced and this density and this density are very nearer to the biodiesel. So, that way the bio oil quality is improved and can be used as a biodiesel. So, this is the chemical route through which waste and biomass can be converted to, to different fuel components. So, thank you very much for your patience.